the debate is over. Our energy policy has created a reliance on fossil fuels that endangers our health, safety, environment, and economic prosperity. Global warming is real. The United States is still dependent on foreign oil and engaged in two wars. The economy speaks for itself. It is time to implement a new energy policy, one based on science and sound economic policy, one based on decentralized energy generated by regionally appropriate clean and renewable resources, one that enables sustainable and equitable economic prosperity. Unfortunately, we are losing time, partly because the entrenched interests of the fossil fuel industry work methodically to misinform the populace by peddling false ideas that benefit only themselves. One of their messages is the false promise of clean coal and carbon capture and sequestration. They spread this misinformation using a coordinated strategy of multi-million dollar ad campaigns, viral marketing, and lobbying efforts towards elected officials, including massive amounts of campaign contributions. But what this industry fails to realize is that the world has changed. We are now smarter and more connected. We can readily find and distribute more grounded and reliable information. We can educate each other. To educate each other, we must first present the truth. It is therefore essential to understand certain aspects of our current energy reality from a general scientific and economic perspective. For this demonstration we will want to understand our energy mix, display US electric generating mix. This is the US mix, or, the types of electricity generating resources we use to meet our energy consumption needs. Notice the amount of coal and other fossil fuels within the mix. This coal and fossil fuel consumption currently is a leading contributor to the over 31 gigatons of carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere each year. Carbon dioxide is the biggest contributor to global warming. Begin wet animation. For this next demonstration, we use a model produced by the International Energy Agency. This line represents the estimated increase in carbon dioxide that will occur in our atmosphere over the next 40 years based on our current energy habits. In 2005. We globally emitted approximately 28 gigatons of carbon dioxide. In 2050 we'll emit approximately 62 gigatons. The more carbon dioxide released, the more bad things occur. Sea levels will rise and unpredictable weather patterns will increase. This will lead to famine, drought, or worse. To avoid the most dangerous climate change impacts, scientists believe we should be here, 14 gigatons. The goal of our new policies must be to get from here to there. The question is how. One proposed solution are stabilization wedges. The idea behind wedges is that by taking certain actionable and manageable steps, investing in renewable energy, efficiency, etc., we as a society can reduce carbon emissions. The first wedge we must implement is energy efficiency. By implementing proven energy efficiency programs and then use fuel switching, we can reduce our CO2 emissions an estimated 26 gigatons per year by 2050. Over the next 40 years, energy efficiency's annual contribution to the reduction of carbon looks like this. Note, how that acts as a wedge. Another benefit for energy efficiency is economic. According to the McKinsey and Companies Investing in Energy Productivity Report, if we spend $170 billion per year through 2020 in energy productivity projects, we will ultimately save $900 billion per year. Efficiency investing will be profitable up to the amount of $730 billion each year, which was approximately the same amount as the first part of the 2008 Wall Street bailout. Energy efficiency, however, is only part of the solution. Another big part of the solution is to increase our usage of renewable energy resources, wind, solar, geothermal and others. This will save us another estimated 10 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year after efficiency and renewable resources. We will still need to reduce our emissions by about 12 gigatons by 2050. Now there are many ideas floating around about how to get those gigatons, many of which get no attention. And while some of the remaining ideas get little attention, one idea in particular is getting a lot, so much so that even the obvious solutions of energy efficiency and renewable energy investment are beginning to be overlooked. This is one of the most expensive and speculative ideas, its technology is at least 15 years away if even possible, and even if it did become reality, it would only eliminate 9 gigatons of carbon dioxide. This idea is carbon capture and sequestration. They call it clean coal. And here is why it gets attention. You may have seen their ads. Show clean coal ad. To further reduce emissions, including the eventual capture and storage of CO2, if we don't, we may have to say goodbye. 
to the American way of life we all know and love. Or your elected officials may have been duped. Show CCS sponsor. California Debates, CNN tomorrow and Thursday nights, 8 Eastern. Sponsored by Americans for Balanced Energy Choices. Show CCS internal memo. Show Obama ad. We figured out how to put a man on the moon in 10 years. You can't tell me we can't figure out how to burn coal that we mine right here in the United States of America and make it work. But here's the reality. Show articles and quotes from scientists against CCS. Here's the Government Accountability Office or GAO. The truth is, if we took the money for CCS and invested in real and viable programs, we'll get much farther, faster. To be clear, clean coal doesn't exist, it isn't likely to, and most importantly, it is not where we should be investing. It is time to take coal off the table and work towards plausible and realistic solutions that are readily available. There must be no government support for CCS or clean coal at this time. All government funding should be directed to the proven and viable solutions of clean renewable energy and energy efficiency. You now know the truth, and we ask you to take action. We ask you to spread this presentation, email it, post it on your blog, and share it with your friends online. We ask you to join us at theclean.org. All across the country, groups are working together to fight for clean energy and new energy policies at the local, state, and national level. This clean network learns from one another and comes to the aid of one another when necessary. We ask you to support candidates that represent the truth when it comes to clean energy and economic policy. We ask you to call out politicians or figureheads for the fossil fuel industry. Our future is dependent on all of us participating and doing what we can to spread truth. A new energy policy is necessary. A new energy future is possible. But you must choose to secure it.